Hi everyone, it's Sherry Vegas here and in this resin tutorial today I'm going to be showing you how to do one of the newest trends to resin which is the Larimer effect. So I have already done a video on this previously which I will link up here but this time I am recreating this and testing out some new techniques and methods to see if I can get some better results. A lot of these were ones that you guys mentioned in the comments so I thought I would test them out like switching up my types of resin, my molds, my pigments. So I'm going to be doing all of that so we can see what is the best method or the easiest method to create this effect. So these are the three courses that I created in the first video testing out this effect. But some of the suggestions you guys sent through was one, try it in a deeper mold. So I've got a deeper mold here today and I've also got the same shallow mold that I did use the first time because I'm going to be doing one deep and one shallow. The other suggestion was change up the resin. So I am changing up the resin today and I'm also going to be using some casting craft white. And if you watched the first video, you would have seen that I used the Pinata White, which is a white alcohol ink. So this time I'm swapping that out and I'm going to be trying the Casting Craft White. I am separating my resin up now. So just putting my smallest amount of resin to one side and that's going to be what I'm going to be putting my white in. I am using the Just Resin Art Cast Resin and it's got a 40 minute working time and a 2 hour repour time which is quite fast for a casting resin so it'll be really interesting to see the results. I'm also using my casting, casting craft, I feel like I'm going to say that wrong so many times throughout this video. And I've just added 3 drops, I don't know if I got a dodgy one. But it's so hard to get the color out. I had to use all of my grip strength and squeeze it so tight to get a few drops to come out. I checked, I stuck a needle up the nozzle and made sure it wasn't blocked, but it's just really hard to get out. Now with this, you still want your white to be really translucent. If you make your white too strong, you'll find it will just stay on the bottom and it won't float up and create the really cool effect that I'm going for with the Larimar effect. Now I'm also just dividing off the last of my resin. You need to keep some just plain and clear and set that to one side. And then I'm going to be using uh, these tints from Barnes. One is turquoise, one is poly supre blue and just a few drops of each. I also just added in some avocado green into my poly supre blue so that way I have a really beautiful greeny blue color and then once that is all really mixed through the resin you're going to want to place your white down first and you just need enough of your white resin to coat the bottom surface area of your mold. You definitely don't want to overdo it with the white resin. And after I've got the white covering the surface area, I'm going to do what's called a puddle pour where you just pour the rest of the colors directly on top in the same spot. So the first one I did was my darkest tint color which was that bluey green followed up with that turquoise color all being poured into the center and that way this will push that white out from the bottom of the mold. And now you can see that white is starting to come back in. So you've got that push-pull effect happening when you pour like this. I do use my blowtorch to just pop any bubbles that were on the surface. And another hint or another tip that was left on the last video was wait until the white has come all the way across into the center and then pour your clear. So that is what I've done on this one. I waited for the white to start to come all the way back into the center and then poured the clear on top. So it'll be interesting to see if that changes anything. And now with this one, I'm following the exact same steps just on my smaller coaster mold. Thank you. 
And now these pieces are set, so it's time to check the results. You got a really beautiful pattern on the back, but you can see I didn't get the perfect Larimar effect. I've got lots of big sort of patches of white and it's not as even as what I would like. And you can also see that I've got a very visible clear center in the middle. And that is probably being caused by waiting for the white to come into the center and then pouring the clear. It's now caused that to have a really visible, big, clear center. So they're okay, but they're not amazing. So for this next one, I'm gonna be changing up the resin. I'm gonna be doing everything the exact same again, but this time I am using a different resin. So the first resin that I did use was from Just Resin and it's the Art Cast Resin. And it's quite a thicker casting resin and it does set a lot faster. Now the resin that I'm using this time is Crystal Cast and it's from Make Art Resin. And it is a really fluid, slow setting resin. It's also got like air releasing technology to it and is designed to be really slow settings. That way you get less bubbles. It's very fluid. It's got a very similar consistency to sort of like melted honey or water. So it's very fluid casting resin. And I'm hoping that with this being a really fluid casting resin, it's going to give me a longer working time. So therefore the resin has longer to move and flow in the mold and create this effect. So before I had a really short working time, this time I've got a really long working time. I think it's about two hours compared to the 40 minute working time I had previously with the Just Resin. And hopefully with a longer working time, it's going to let the resin have more opportunity to flow and create those patterns before it does start to set. And I also this time didn't wait for that white to come into the center. I just poured the clear resin straight away so that way I can avoid that really big gap in the center of my piece. And this is what that piece looks like now it has set. You can see I didn't get a gap in the middle by pouring that clear resin straight away. So I definitely recommend that. And I also have a lot more beautiful pattern with the white and I don't have any big chunks. It's still not perfect. So I'm gonna be trying something else out but I do think it does look a lot better than the first attempt. I'm not really happy with how this looks in the shallow mold, but definitely looks a lot better using that fluid casting resin in the big molds. Now for this last pour, I'm changing up things again just a tiny bit. In my shallow mold, I'm gonna be using the Art Resin from Just Resin, sorry, the Art Casting Resin, because it's a bit thicker, and I feel like with your shallow molds, because they're not that deep, the resin doesn't need a lot of time to work to create that pattern. And now with my deep mold, I'm gonna be using that um, Make Art Crystal Cast Resin, which is the really slow setting resin that's very fluid. And the reason behind this is I feel like the fluid resins that are really slow setting work really great for this effect if you're using a deep mold because it needs that extra time to be able to flow and create those patterns because you are using more resin and the mold is deeper. So I'm doing all of that the exact same. So for my shallow one, I'm using the Just Resin and for my big mold, I am using the Make Art Crystal Cast Resin. And the only other thing that I did change for this pour is with my white, I did two drops of the Casting Craft and two drops of a white alcohol ink. I feel like the alcohol ink, because of the fact that it is an alcohol ink and will react differently in the resin, is what really helps that white create cool patterns. Now I did get cool patterns using just the Casting Craft, but I think it's just gonna help it even more. And for this one, I'm gonna add a few little bits of these glitter chips into the center. So that way I've just got a really pretty center. You do need to wait to add these in. You can't do it at the first part because we need that sort of patterns to be created. So when you do create a Larimer effect, you can't do this at the start. You have to wait to the very end to add any sort of glitters or crystals that you wanna add into the center because otherwise it will affect the way that the white and the other colors flow. 
And these are the final two pieces, which I can already tell they're going to be really cool because the backs are looking awesome. And then when I turn them over, I have got the best Larima effect so far. The white has spread out beautifully. You can see the two different blues, which you don't normally see in a lot of Larima pores. Sometimes the colors do disappear a bit. So I really like the fact that I can see the two blues that I've used. And then with my smaller coaster, once again, I've got a really beautiful effect. I definitely do think the Larimar looks way better in the deeper pour. It just gives so much more pattern, but there's such a massive difference between the first pour I did and the last pour I did. And it's so crazy how just changing up one or two things that might not even seem that important, like, you know, the type of white you're using will make such a big difference in the outcome of your pieces. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this Alarima effect. Has this video helped you out? If it has, please give it a big thumbs up. It always helps my channel and helps this video grow. If you have any other helpful tips or tricks or hints for this, Feel free to leave them down in the comments because I'd love to test them out in a new video on this. But thank you so much for watching and if you are new to my channel, please do subscribe as I post new videos every single week.